transformations in the coordinate plane. We're at lesson 1.7 and we have six previous videos for this chapter which are linked in the description if you become lost or confused. A transformation is a change in the position, size, or shape of a figure. The original figure is called the pre-image. You might see it with or without that hyphen. And the transformed figure is called the image. That's the copy. A transformation maps the pre-image to the image. When we use arrow notation. You'll see a little arrow like we have here. And it means is transformed to. And primes are these little tick marks. See? They're used to label the image, the copy. Now primes are not exponents. I don't want you to confuse this with a to the first power. They're little tick marks that are like little apostrophes. Okay? So this pre-image triangle ABC slid over to this position to A prime, B prime, C prime. That's how we would read that. Now, a lot of you are familiar with the transformer toys. And they change, don't they? They go from a vehicle like a car or a fire truck or, you know, this kind of truck to a robot. They transform, they change, don't they? So we're going to talk about three transformations. There's also dilations. We'll talk about that in chapter four. So a reflection is a flip. It's a transformation across a line called the line of reflection. And each point and its image, its copy, are the same distance from the line of reflection. So in this drawing, if you look, these are both one unit away from the line of reflection. This triangle just completely flipped over like that. See? Now, if you've never learned any of this before, because this should be a review, you should watch Grade 8, Chapter 9, okay? And we're going to go through these, but if you have never learned these before, it's going to be hard to remember them, okay? Because learning is by layering. You learn it one year, and you learn a little bit more about it the next year. A rotation, or turn, is a transformation about a point called the center of rotation. So here we have this rectangle, and it rotated to this position laying down, see? And this point P is the center of rotation. It went boom. Each point and its image, its copy, are the same distance from the center of rotation. So if you look at point A, it's two units away from the center of rotation. And A prime here is two units away from the center of rotation. And B, C, and D are the same distance from this point P, okay? A translation or slide is a transformation in which all the points of a figure move the same distance in the same direction. So this blue triangle translated, it slid up to here. See? We can identify transformations by looking at the figures. We look at this triangle ABC, it's a right triangle, and we see A prime, B prime, C prime triangle. Well, this figure flipped across a line of reflection. It's a reflection. And we can use arrow notation to describe the transformation. We write a little triangle symbol to stand for triangle, ABC. The arrow is read as is transformed to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. This figure didn't flip or turn. It looks like it just moved over. It just slid over, didn't it? It's a translation. And triangle ABC is transformed to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Whoops, this isn't supposed to be there, is there? It's a triangle. It's only got three points. All right? So remember, we read this as is transformed to. We can draw and identify transformations. A figure has vertices at A, B, and C, and A is at negative 1, 4. That's the X and the Y. So if we look over here, it's at negative 1, 4. It's at negative 1 on the X and 4 on the Y. B is at negative 1, 1. Negative 1 on the X and 1 on the Y. And C is at 3 for the X and 1 for the Y. It's right here. After a transformation, the image of the figure has vertices at A prime is negative 1, negative 4 down here. B prime is negative 1, negative 1 right here. And C prime is 3, negative 1. It's over here. 
We need to draw the pre-image and the image and identify the transformation. So knowing where these points are, we can draw them and plot the points and use a straight edge to connect the vertices. So we see we have these two triangles. And by looking at them, we can see that this pre-image flipped over and it's a reflection across the x-axis as its line of reflection. So the line of reflection is actually the x-axis. Sometimes in drawings it could be the y-axis, okay? Each point and its image are the same distance from the x-axis. They have the same x-coordinates. So if we look at these x-coordinates, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, 3, 3. So A has the same x-coordinate as A prime. B has the same x-coordinate as B prime, and C has the same x-coordinate as C prime. See that? And take a look at this drawing. We've got, this is the pre-image, and it slid to this position, then slid to this position, and then slid to this position. So it slid a few times, didn't it? Well, there are primes for the first image, so we've got A prime. There are double primes for the second image. So, because it moved twice, it moved here and then it moved again, so it's like an image of an image, we have a double prime. It's got two tick marks. And when it moved again, we have a triple prime. There's triple primes for the third image. And remember that you can watch the Grade 8, Chapter 9 videos for more help. We even talk about how to do this algebraically, okay? To find coordinates for the image of a figure in a translation, we add A to the x-coordinates of the pre-image and add B to the y-coordinates of the pre-image. So translations can be described by a rule. We have x, y is transformed to whatever x is plus a and whatever y is plus b. See? x plus a, y plus b. And we can find the coordinates for the image, that's the copy, of triangle ABC after the translation. If it tells us that it's transformed to x plus 3 and y minus 4, if we have the pre-image, then we can just do adding 3 to the x and taking away 4 to the y. First, we find the coordinates of triangle ABC. So we can see A is at negative 1, 1, B is at negative 3, 3, and C is at negative 4, 0. Now, knowing these coordinates, all we have to do is add 3 and take away 4. We add 3 to the x values and take away 4 from the y values. So we apply this rule to find the vertices of the image, the copy. A prime is going to be our x, negative 1, plus 3. That's our rule. We add 3 to negative 1, we get a 2. Our y for A prime is going to be 1 minus 4. That's the rule. That's going to give us a negative 3. So now we know the coordinates of A prime. We do the same thing for B prime and C prime and for B prime, we get a 0, negative 1, and for C prime, we get a negative 1, negative 4, after we do the math. And we can plot these points and finish the drawing of the image by using a straight edge to connect the vertices. And now that we've got these points, we know that this is our image. And look, it just kind of slid down, didn't it? So it translated. We can write a rule that maps the cars from position one to position two. So if you look at these cars, I use the tip of the bumper for my A and A prime. And I looked at the coordinates. This is at one for X and two for Y, the tip of the bumper, isn't it? And this one is at negative nine for X and four for Y. So now that I've got these coordinates, the image didn't rotate or reflect, so it must have slid as a translation. The car moved across to the left and up a little bit. It kind of slid up like that, didn't it? To translate A to A prime, 10 units are subtracted from the x coordinate. If it's at 1 and it goes to negative 9, well, it must have moved 10 units. So we need to take away 10 units because it's going into the negative and two units are added to the y-coordinate because we were at two and now it's at four, so we must be adding two. So our translation rule is x minus 10, y plus two. 
And this rule will be the same no matter which point we began with. If we say B is the bumper, we look at where B is and it's at 10 for X and 2 for Y, we can use this same rule and find that B prime should be at 0, 4. We're going to take away 10 and add 2. Take away 10, we're at 0. Add 2, we're at 4. See? So, if you look in the mirror, you are the pre-image, and your reflection is the image. And the mirror itself is the line of reflection. For rotations, if you look at her, she's spinning around in this tight little circle. So her center of rotation is a dot on the top of her head. She's just spinning around like this. Her center of rotation is the center of her head. S same here, she's just doing it a little tighter, okay? So she'll go faster. I don't know if you've seen these toys that you put on your ankle and it spins around in a big circle and you jump over it, you skip over it. Well, her center of rotation is her ankle and this is rotating around in a big circle around her body, around her ankle. Okay, so the center of rotation can be directly in the middle of the figure and it could just rotate in place like this, like the ice skater, or it could be one of the vertices and it could rotate around the vertice, vertex like that. It could also be away from the figure and rotate like this and have this as the center of rotation, but it's rotating far away from it, okay? For translating, translations, it's just a slide. If he slid and stayed in that position with his legs and arms and everything exactly like that and just slid, he'd be translating. A penguin slides on its belly on the ice. If it stayed in that position and just moved stiff like that, he'd be translating. We would be able to plot the tip of its beak to another location using the tip of its beak as A prime, couldn't we? We're going to discuss more about these transformations in chapter 4 and chapter 9, okay? I'm going to talk about the dilations too. So just so you know, I got a picture of Emma up here. She's dilating. Let me see if I can... This is dilation. Think of like your pupils dilating in your eyes, okay? Here she's big. She got smaller and smaller and smaller. Or you could look at it as smaller and she's getting bigger. But that's a dilation, larger or smaller, okay? So... I hope this was helpful, like I always do. And our next lesson is going to be using inductive reasoning to make conjectures. I'll explain what inductive reasoning is, and I'll explain what conjectures are. Okay? So I hope you have a great day. And if you had any trouble with this, go back to the Grade 8 Math Playlist, Chapter 9. There'll be a link in the description to help you. And maybe hearing me explain it in a different grade level might be better for you. Okay? I'll see you next time. Bye.